Number 62, Big Ted Klazuski of the Cincinnati Reds. And that photograph, of course, was taken in the polo grounds. That was a fun video to do many years ago now, as it turns out. So this must be session 62 of Card Room Live. Uh, I have to say this every time, but this is not a show. So if you're expecting a show, you're going to be sorely disappointed. This is a hangout for fellow vintage collectors. Sometimes we have guests. We don't have any guests tonight. Um, most of the time we waste time looking at and talking about cardboard and through it all, we always try to make it time well wasted. So good evening to everybody. Happy Sunday evening to everybody. Uh, if you are here live, uh, I hope you'll make yourself known uh, in the chat introduce yourself, say hello. Um, I'll be taking a look at the chat here in a moment. And um, this is a solo uh, session, so to speak. So uh, I'll be relying on you guys in the chat to kind of see what we're going to be up to tonight. If you're listening to this later on, um, I don't know why you are, but that's cool. Maybe you're going to work. Maybe you're coming home from work. Maybe you're sorting cards, looking at eBay, walking the dog. Sitting on the John, you might be wondering, will Think Blue 77 ever make another video? I like to pick on Jesse. Whatever you might be doing, I hope you get something out of this session. I hope you have a good time. Uh, if you want to get in touch or have ideas for future sessions, you can always email me at bowman53channel at gmail.com. I've been having more uh, people do that. And I appreciate it. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Bowman53 underscore Alex. You can find me on Twitter or X at 1953 Bowman Color. You can always find that information located in the description below. And so here we are, session 62. The Phillies are, uh, I feel like it's pretty safe to say, on their way to a wild card spot. Um, I guess I could jinx that, but I feel pretty confident saying that, um, they're playing the Mets right now. They've got the lead. I guess their magic number is one or two or something, uh, along those lines. Um, I think the magic number is sometime early next week. We'll, we'll just say that. And, um, definitely always a fun time of the year. Uh, it's always fun when your team is contending and, you know, wild card, is what it is, but I like the wild card because it means they're in and the regular season is over with and anything can happen in the postseason, and I'm all for that. So let's see who's here and uh, see what's going on in the chat. Yo and hello, B. Roth 6, good to see you. Brian, a longstanding member of the community and some of one of the earliest – guests to ever be on card room live in fact i think brian was on the very first session that we ever did before it was what it is now i'm not sure what it is now uh father son vintage cards what's up rick is here rick was on our last show always good to have rick around hitman 23 is here good evening mr reindeer studios uh scott made a great video when was that? Yesterday or the day before? I, I, I can't keep track of time anymore, but Scott's most recent video was awesome. Not just the artwork and the video itself, but also 
Scott's uh, thoughts on his process. That was cool to hear about, but also just, um, as I recall, he, he shared some thoughts about um, collecting and his process and everything like that. And I appreciated it. Don is here so we can begin. What's up, Don? Uh, I'm assuming, Don, that the dog is with you and that you've got a cigar. Those are my two assumptions. Mike, sports history collector, we want a show, entertain us. Well, that's why I like saying that it's not a show because this is not entertaining. There's nothing entertaining in here. So if you're expecting like really cool like uh, tips and tricks and like hobby news and stuff, uh, go somewhere else because you're, <laughs> you're not going to find it here. Uh, this, is, this is a hangout first and foremost every now and then we might have some news or something interesting but we generally try to avoid that here uh the card story uh good evening to you we avoid it because it's you can find that you can find that in plenty of other places that do a better job of it so i'm not going to try to do that here uh brian nursing a cold but hanging in there had a very fun philly show cool um i'm glad you had a good show sorry that you have a cold um Look forward to your recap whenever you're ready to do it. Orlando's here. I mean, I really, I really hope you guys end up going to Cleveland. I'm at this point planning to go to Cleveland. It's not like 100% official, but I really want to be there and I really want to sit at the bar with you two guys and take a photograph so that we don't have to have Jesse's Photoshop job. Um, as much as I love that, I would like to have a real picture at the bar with you guys. Um, I'm hoping if I do a commission for Jesse, maybe, maybe he'll make a video. That's the only way to get Jesse to make a video. I like it. It's a plan. Impact player. He is a real person, guys, and he is a great member of this community and a great collector, and I'm always excited when Josh is around. Good to see you, man. Yeah, so now we have, like, actual dialogue from the show. You guys need to step up the dialogue, though. Ch Cheers was, like, really funny, so you guys are going to have to, like, come up with the good, good jokes. Baseball season is still going on. You know, I, I like to say that as a Phillies fan, when I was a kid, I really truly thought that baseball was over in September. I didn't really know that there was such a thing as the World Series and that you could play in the World Series and that there was baseball in October like that. That, that never even occurred to me because I was a Phillies fan. And that was not something that Phillies fans were worried about in the 1980s for the most part. So uh, I got to say, I'm very, I always feel very fortunate as you know as angry and embittered and selfish and privileged as i can get as a phillies fan sometimes when they're doing well i'm always eternally grateful when they get into the postseason because i remember what it was like growing up when that was not even a possibility so i empathize with the pirates and any other teams out there that are hurting to get into the postseason all i can say is that when it finally happens boy it's going to be incredible i'm i'm really i gotta say i'm legit excited for baltimore i think it's fantastic that that team is doing as well as it is baltimore is a great baseball town an incredible uh franchise and it's about time that they get some you know time in the sun so to speak rocket rick what's up dylan is here everybody uh ttm bob is here A's fan, Jim is here, lots of great people. Dom is here, what's up, Dom? Must be here, well, I, I'm not sure why, but I appreciate it, Orlando. I'm always happy to see you guys in here, always happy to chat it up with you guys. Mookie's here, it's a party. Um, Brian, am I bidding on that Snyder? No, Brian sent me a link to, um, was it REA Auctions or another auction uh, that had a... Uh, PSA 10 autographed 53 Bowman color Duke Snyder. No, I am not bidding on that Snyder. Um, no chance in hell. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate you sending it to me, Brian, because it's definitely fun to look at. Um, I have, I don't think I have a single autographed baseball card. I have one autographed baseball card that my brother gifted me a few years ago. That was Reese Hoskins as a like a Christmas present. Which was really nice, but I don't, I don't collect modern, and I don't collect autograph baseball cards. I'm not opposed to it, 
Um, but that's a rabbit hole I haven't gone down yet. Hodges is here. Good evening to you. Um, very cool. I'm glad, Ryan. I, I would assume you'd be in Cleveland, and I'm looking forward to your recap. Yes, hello to all newcomers in here. If you're new, um, again, say hello. Even if you're, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers in here and everybody kind of knows each other. If you're a new person, say hello. You'll find everybody's very welcoming in here. We were all new people at one time or another. I remember going into live streams as a new YouTuber or even before I had a YouTube channel and, and being really self-conscious. Don't waste your time being self-conscious. Everybody here is friendly, welcoming, and we're excited when there's another collector out there that wants to connect with other collectors. So I hope you'll uh, introduce yourself if you're new. Uh, Chuck is here. Good evening, Chuck, and happy birthday to you. Happy recent birthday to Chuck. Um, must I must I show people the card that I'm not going to bid on? Okay, let me see how to do this. Um, how quickly can I find this card? It'd be easier if I could just do this. Yes. Thank you, Internet. Um, give me one second here. Ah, hate when they do this. Um, well, all right, here we go. Sorry for the delay, everybody. I just lost like six people who couldn't wait. That's okay. Got to be patient on this live stream. So Brian sent me this link. Uh, it's an REA auction. Uh, and 1953 Bilbon Collar Duke Snyder. C, uh, PSA DNA, DNA certified. Authentic Auto 10 Duke Snyder. Yeah, I mean, maybe Brian, uh, you recall trying to help me find a Duke Snyder card in 2019 at the national. Um, I didn't find one at the national. I found one later at some point, but, uh, it was a lot of fun looking for one. I appreciated you trying to help me find one. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I don't want to collect this set again. If I ever collect 53 Bowman color again. I'll do it uh, raw and I'll do it ungraded. I think that would be fun. I'm happy to have it graded. But uh, uh, yes, yes, the card is art. Um, autograph aside, it's a beautiful looking card. What's up, Lou? White Sox fan collectors here. What's up, Mitchell? Prestige collectibles. Sorry, I'm forgetting your name. I know other people in here know your name, so please remind me. But uh, always happy to see you in here. Dean, who collects it all, is in here. Um, I don't know why this is being so problematic. Hold on one sec. Scott, you must answer this question, but perhaps you already have.
What's up, guys? I hope you entertained yourselves while I was away. I think it was because I had my Phillies stream going and the Phillies, let's see, did the Phillies destroy my internet? I don't know. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, let's see. Hey, Lou is here. Welcome, Lou. Lou, do you have a channel? Let me get try to get caught up here. I'm not sure if I'm back or not. Yeah, I would have to do it raw and ungraded, right? Because I can't, there's no way I could collect that set the way I did now. It would take too long. And it would be way too expensive. Uh, showing me. I'm back. It's a little rough. Um, I'll, al I'll allow it, Brian. Um, I know it's been a rough year for you, so I'll allow it. Ah, not sure why it's being so stuttery guys. Sorry. Um, we'll try to keep going here. Um, so one of the, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is today, uh, usually on Sundays I have a little bit more time and, um, I try to work on, uh, card related stuff and I've got, um, I've got a video that I'm finally working on. Uh, for those of you that have that have um, known me for a while and have been on my channel for a while, there's been a long-standing series of videos that I've been working on for the past, gosh, couple of years maybe. And um, essentially, what it was was a series of videos surrounding the. Uh, Bowman color set, but specifically focusing on uh, each team from that set that is represented. And I'll show the uh, um, I'll show the playlist in case anybody's curious, because I, I would certainly uh, encourage anybody that's interested to, to to check it out. So it's uh the the name of the playlist is 1953 Bowman color team sets. And in 1953, there were 16 teams in the majors. And so I've got 15 of the 16 teams uh, represented so far. Um, I started with the Pirates, moved on to the Indians, Cardinals, and, and then I just like one at a time, I did each team. And basically each video um, highlights the cards that represent that team from the set. But I also would tack on sort of like a mini piece about something interesting that happened to the team in 1953. And, um, you know, looking at the average length of the video in here, it's, you know, anywhere from eight to nine minutes, sometimes a little bit longer. And each is slightly different from the, from the, from the rest. Um, I wish I would have thought of this earlier, but like maybe four or five episodes in, I finally had this idea, like, why don't I have a, another YouTuber do the narration for the, for the sort of story part. And I had a bunch of YouTubers, um, help me out with that. Some of you guys might be in here tonight. Like geez, Mikey did the very last one on the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, anyway, I, I, planned to leave i alternated between the american league and the national league i kept going back and forth 
um, as I was doing the videos and I left the Dodgers and the Yankees for last because I wanted to, I wanted to leave the last two teams that were in the world series that year and do those teams last. So I did the Dodgers last year and then I was like, okay, I got, I got to do the Yankees and then I'll be done with this thing. And honestly, it's been a year. I, I, I kept thinking, I got to do this video. I got to do this video. I got to finish this, uh, series. And I just kept putting it off. And part of the reason I kept putting it off was because quite honestly, I couldn't, uh, first of all, I, I, I just couldn't find the motivation to do it. And part of the motivation for me has got to be that I'm excited about the story that I want to tell. And I, so I have to find something to focus on. And that's been the hardest thing for whatever reason you would think the Yankees, like there's just tons and tons of stories every, you know, there's so much stuff out there about the Yankees, but I just couldn't find something that really got me um, excited to, to, uh, to jump into it. And I think part of that was because everything was like super broad. I didn't want to talk about the world series. I didn't want to like overwhelm myself with like too, too broad a situation. So I finally was like looking around and then I realized, Oh, 53, that's the year that mantle hit that crazy home run in Washington. And people know about that home run, but I thought that would be kind of fun to kind of really focus in on that specific home run and tell that story. So I've been really kind of digging into that and that kind of got me going. So like over the past couple of days, I've been reading about it. Um, I've been figuring out what I want to do with it. And um, just today I started shooting it. So I'm going to share this with you guys. Um, hopefully you guys can still see me and hopefully I'm still live. I have no idea. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I'm going to share a separate screen. I'm not super far into making this video, but I just thought it would be interesting to talk about this and share a little bit about my process. Um, and this is totally off the cuff, of course. Okay, so let's see. All right, so here we go. All right, so those of you that I think I did this like maybe a few weeks ago where I was showing some, like a video. I think at the time I might have been working on, I think it was the Red Hearts video when I did this, which is like several videos ago. So anyway, so now I'm on to the Yankees video and I'm, you know, there's a, there's an established um, pattern for lack of a better word for these videos. Um, and this is the very last one. So, um, I'm just sticking to that. So this is number 16 and, um, I shot this today. So every, and it's kind of, it's probably small for you guys on the screen, but, um, every team video starts with, uh, a setup of a couple of the cards and I have this magazine from 53 that has every team represented and some, some photos of them. And so I shot this today. And then, um, this is honestly the, the thing that's always a bear to do, which is like showing all the cards. I have all the cards right here. Um, so here they all are still because I might still need them so that I pulled all these today and, um, I show them in the order. So, you know, you got Rizzuto and Rashi. And of course, the really fun thing about the Yankees, of course, uh, in this set is all the multiplayer cards. Um, so you've got Bear, Bauer, and Mantle. And this is honestly, this is the hardest part to do from the card part because I've got to get them all set up and I'm trying to not knock anything over and I'm holding it in front of the camera and. You know, you guys all know if you made card videos, like the more cards you're trying to show in a video, the more chance there is for like chaos to ensue. So I actually did this on the first try. Nothing fell over, nothing in the camera didn't get knocked over. Um, got through all the cards. And there's something really satisfying about seeing all the cards of that particular team from that year together. 
Um, so it's also fun for me to get to kind of like get reacquainted with the cards and see them like that because I've, I've never really done that. I've, I've seen the cards like the entire set together and I've certainly seen them as like as they came in. But to like actually see them as a team uh, is really satisfying. I probably should have I just realized I probably should have pulled the Casey Stangle, the black and white Casey Stangle. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll pull that card and shoot a little uh insert of casey stangle as like a as like an easter egg anyway so um i've been working on that and uh the middle part of course is going to be the story about mickey mantle hitting that home run um and i've been pulling all these pictures and so so for example here's a shot of mickey and i'm pretty sure that this is um mickey after the game uh, you know, posing for the Associated Press photographer or whatever. There's a couple pictures I have of him doing this with the ball. Um, I have some actual photographs and like, so here's like a newspaper uh, clipping from the game. Um, of course, here's the the uh, the very famous baseball card. How many of you guys have this baseball card? Um, Probably a lot of you guys have this baseball card. So it's this home run uh, that I'm going to be focusing on, which he hit in 53 against the Senators. Uh, there aren't a lot of, I mean, it's not surprising. There aren't a lot of photographs from that game uh, available, but um, I'm also just grabbing random shots of mantle that I can use here and there. Um, and there's a lot of shots that, that people have from Griffith Stadium showing the path of the ball after the fact um and let's see what else do i have in here the picture is super small so you guys may not be able to see it very well but this is a photograph that was taken not like maybe even days after the game i'm not 100 sure um with i think his name is red patterson who's like a, a pr guy for the yankees with mickey and the tape measure and of course this is where the tape measure home run uh phrase comes from but there was no tape measure when he actually measured it out he just did it by pacing it out and figuring it out on the spot um and he also like found this little kid who had the ball and there's all these like like did he actually find like there's all these stories that i'll i'll try to get into in the video it's really it's, i think it's pretty interesting um anyway they they, they pose for this photograph I don't know if it was the day of or, or later. And then um, I found this too. This is um, this was actually given to Mickey Mantle. So I'll read this to you guys because you probably can't see it. It says 600 feet, uh, 600 foot tape presented to Mickey Mantle for hitting a 585 foot home run at Washington, May 1956. Um, so by this point, the tape measure concept had like caught on and everybody was like interested in um, how far did he hit it today and all that sort of thing. And of course now, like I was thinking about this when you're watching a baseball game nowadays, you instantly know how far the, the ball went and you even know like the exit velocity and all that kind of stuff. Well, at the time, like people were fascinated by that, but like couldn't, you know, there, there was no way to actually measure it on the, like immediately they had to kind of like figure it out uh manually so to speak so um this is going to be fun to put together i i started doing this um i'll show this to you guys real quick so there's this really famous photograph that they use for the baseball card of like the arrow going outside the park um and uh i started to try to um animate it so i'm gonna i'll play this for you guys right now you may or may not be able to see it but the ball leaves the park and the arrow goes with the ball. Um, it's, it's super crude, but it, it's good enough uh, for me. And it was fun to do. And it just adds a little something uh, to the video. Um, and I'm using the original photograph and the original arrow, but I just made it red. Uh, so it's a little easier to see. And then I put the, the, uh, the distance in there as well. So super early on this project, um, but it'll be fun to put together. And then I'll be really glad 
honestly, when this, when this one's done, because then I can just be like, all right, this whole thing is done. I did all 16 of these. Um, I, I'm really proud of them. Some of them are, some of them are better than others. Maybe some of them are more interesting than others, but it was a lot of fun to do. And, um, yeah, I guess that's it for, for this so far. There's not a whole lot to look at in here yet. Um, I still have a lot of looking around to do and figuring things out and, and, and putting the thing together, but, um, always having fun doing it. And I was talking to somebody in YouTube land, uh, recently about, um, YouTube in general and making videos. And, you know, one of the things that I told them, and I think we all kind of say, this is like, it's gotta be fun, right? If you're not having fun, uh, you gotta, you gotta reevaluate your, your YouTubing because if it's not fun for you, um, it's probably not worth doing. So, I guess the good news for me is I'm still having fun, still enjoying it. And, uh, I certainly hope other people get something out of it too, but either way I'm having a good time. So I think that's all that really matters. Okay. Um, so that's it for the, the YouTube thing. Um, as I get finished with that, if I'm still working on it, I might share like a progress thing next week, but, uh, We'll see how, how far along I can get. Usually when I get started with that stuff, it gets done fairly quickly because uh, I just get on a roll and I just want to see it finished. Um, here's a set that I wanted to talk to you guys about, ask you guys about. Uh, one of my favorite, all-time favorite sets, if I had to call some out, would be the 49 Bowman. I love 49 Bowman. I think that's a beautiful set. But the strange thing is um, I don't really have – almost any of those cards. Um, I just got one in and I'll, this will be a card room live exclusive. Um, I will share with you guys a card that I have not made a video for yet. I just got this card, um, a couple days ago. It's the 49 Bowman Bobby Thompson. And you probably can't see the grade cause it's blown out. It's a three. I don't even know what the grade is, but, uh, I'm happy with the look of the card. Now, you guys know I'm collecting New York baseball, and I'm particularly interested in the Thompson and Branca story, so I had to get this one. I love this card. I love 49 Bowman. I think they're really interesting cards, beautiful cards. Um, they kind of remind me of um, a 48 Leaf in terms of the, the way that they're made, and I just really love these cards. Um I know there are several YouTubers that are fans of this of this set. Um, there's, you know, some YouTubers that are building this set. The only other one that I have is a pretty big one. This is one of my favorite cards, of course. Uh, I got this card a long time ago, and I'm very glad that I did. But my question for you guys is, I only got, well, I only got two of these cards. I got one more coming in. You might be able to guess which one it is. But my question for you is, um, what are your, what's your favorite 49 Bowman card or like, what's a 49 Bowman card that you're a big fan of? Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be a hall of famer. It doesn't have to be a rookie card. Um, just a 49 Bowman card that you think is, I, you know, just like eye catching, interesting, you know, one that like catches your eye. Well, we got to start with that one, right? Definitely. Let me pull up eBay here and pull up some of these cards as you guys call them out. I mean, everybody knows what this card looks like, but let's look at one anyway. Yeah, that, that card is definitely on my wish list. I'm sure it's on a lot of people's wish lists. Thank you, Dom. Appreciate it. It's a great set. It's kind of sneaky expensive, Mitchell says. Uh, that's the same picture used for 48 Bowman, so you need that one too. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I, 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 I 
typically try to avoid that if I can. Um, and between the two of them, I really liked the 49 more. Um, yeah, 49 Bowman are total works of art. Yes, Jackie's great. And I know you know because I know you you love that card a lot too, sir. Um, but I agree. They are, they are works of art. They're really, really interesting. They're really unique. Okay, Will is here. Bob Feller. Let's look up the Bob Feller. Try to get a decent image of it. Yeah, it's really cool. I like the Indians logo across his chest there. I'll try to show all these. Doug says stand usual. Look at this. That's awesome. Some kid wrote Stan Musial on it and it, and it's a one and it's been taped up. This this card is like somebody really loved this card and it makes it cheaper and like not desirable to some, but it's pretty cool. Campanella. I can spell. Yes. Wearing a Negro Leagues uniform and uh, the logo painted out. Yes, Tom, we all know. And it was already covered, so I think we're good. 49 Bowman Barrett. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, Dan. And that one is... That one is on my list already. I really like that card. It's just a great shot of him watching the watching the hit that he just made fly up into the sky. It's great. Uh, this may be kind of random, but for some reason I love the 49 Bowman Johnny Mize. Bless you, Jason. Those are my favorite. Uh, cards are the random ones let's look at cards that perhaps some of us haven't looked at in a while the johnny mize is great that one's on my list too um here he is with the giants cool yes i believe that don field of dreams cards does have the 49 bowman uh satchel page that's my understanding Beyond the page and Robin said I'd be really happy with the campy for sure. Rocket Rick says Robin Roberts. Always happy to look up a Philly. Well, so the Phillies, by the way, just uh, swept the Mets. There's a rough looking 49 Bowman Robin Roberts, but cool card. And I love that they have the alternate, um, well, now now for the Phillies, the alternate blue cap, which they still wear sometimes, and the cream colored uniforms. My namesake, Dom DiMaggio. Sure. Yeah, the red with the with the Red Sox works nicely. Um, Don's namesake is Don Mossy. Sadly, I don't think Don Mossy has a forty nine Bowman card. Um, any Giants players a good pickup because Rick is here. The Dobie, yes, the mustard card is what I like to call it. The Larry Dobie. Is way up there. 
flipping a nice copy. Yeah, that thing makes me want a beer and hot dog with some mustard on it. The aspect ratio of the cardboard pleases me. I don't know if they're the exact same size as the 48s and 50s. That's a good question. I'm not sure. Does anybody else know if the uh, size of the 49 Bowman is the same as the 48s and the 50s? Will says the Snyder. Yep. I believe that's his rookie too. Yeah, another another mustard card. I think Campy is one of the best overall runs of cards in general. Yeah, he's up there. I would I would it's funny because I would say Barra does too. The two catchers have great cards. There, thank you for the update, Ed. Ed Ed comes back in and keeps me updated with Philly's news. The magic number is down to one. I repeat, the magic number is down to one. Go Phillies, right? The Mize is the same pick as the 48. Oh, I appreciate it, Dan. Let's take a look at this one. I, I see I love these ones because I the, the image doesn't immediately come to mind. So I, I always like looking these up. Tommy Holmes. Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, when was the last time anybody in here looked at that card? That's a beautiful card, especially if you're, you know, not just vintage, but, you know, Braves fans out there. That's a great looking card. Speaking of, let's take a look at the Warren Spawn. Yeah, I always I always like this image because it looks like he's still kind of checking out the runner on first before he fully comes home. It's a great shot. Early win. Yeah, as I recall the wind has like a really great patch. Yeah, you can see like part of his the patch on his uh, uniform there. I like that Robin Roberts. I need to add that to my list. So that's something that we're really proud of here on Card Room Live is encouraging people to uh, splurge on baseball cards. Happy, happy to help in that regard, guys. Um, feel free to let me know if you've made purchases um, in part because you were uh, enticed by something we looked at on this show. And especially if, you, if you're like regretting it or, you know, like spending money that you don't have. <laughs> I hope that's not happening. Um, we, we claim no responsibility for that, but it's fun to hear about it. Uh, let's see. The win is cool. He's pictured with Washington. That's his only card, I believe, in that uniform, right? Um, the app lane, which Mitchell also mentioned. I feel like app lane comes a lot, up a lot these days. Not a, not a White Sox cap that immediately comes to mind. You can kind of see his the Sox logo, but it's kind of covered up a little bit by his name there. Uh, Scott looked it up. Uh, same size as the 50s. I checked the 48, but I only have one of those and the cat sleeping on the box that it's in. Yeah, so between confirming the size of a baseball card and the cat sleeping, we have to go with the cat. 
definitely. Hitman 23, Allie Reynolds. Yes, that's a great one. Looking good there. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that's always, to me, that's always like the painful slash interesting part of these sets is like which big name players were missing from the set. Um, part of it's painful because you wish they were in there, but the other part of it's interesting because you have to figure out what happened, what was going on. Were they in the military? Were they, were they at war? Was there some contract dispute? Um, there's always some kind of story behind it, and I think that's part of what makes all of this interesting. <laughs> Pete, Pete, I've made numerous purchases because of you. Well, my pleasure, man. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. You, okay, Tito Sam Jack Berry. Yeah, so uh, Doug, you and I are are in the Jack Berry Club for T two o seven. Um, you made the right the right choice. Um, I just put a bid on eBay. We'll see if it costs me anything tonight. Great. Um. We have to hang on to the past as White Sox fans. The present is depressing. Yeah, I understand that. Every team has those painful ups and downs. Um, Joe D has exactly zero Bowman cards. Yeah. Imagine, just imagine all the great cards. Um Here's, a, here's kind of a weird thought, but I'll, it just popped in my head. You know, obviously we have those war years, let's say 40, I'm being kind of loose here, 40 to 45. I mean, there were some seriously amazing design aesthetics in the U.S. at that time. Imagine uh, what baseball cards could have looked like at that time period. I mean, imagine a world without war. That's probably a better thing to imagine uh, than baseball cards uh, in terms of what's important. But just like 40 to 45, like so many amazing things that we could have, that we could have had so many amazing players that missed out on numbers for their careers and so much more um, that got delayed. Uh, and I always think about that when I think about Joe DiMaggio and, and many other players that went through that. Uh, but yes, but Joe does have a really, I think a really kind of cool Burke Ross card. Um, cool. You guys definitely named some good ones. Um, I also, I didn't mention it, but you could probably guess, I have the 49 Bowman, Ralph Branca, coming in. Uh, that's his rookie card, as it turns out. Not why I'm getting it. It's just a card that I really like of his. And I've been focusing a little bit on Thompson and Branca lately. And I'll put a video together about that and show off some of those cards uh, soon enough. But, uh, you know, the videos are piling up. I don't make a lot of videos, but um, I like to take a little time and, and uh, sh you know, just put them together the way that I want to do them. 51 and 52, are they the same image? Yeah, I'm familiar with that one. Oh wow, yeah, that's right. I have seen this. I think I'm I think I usually um for whatever reason I'm more used to the square one. Um, but this is cool. Uh good night to you, Mitchell. And yes, enjoy the last week of the season. Yeah, fifty-two. Just it, it actually reminds me of what what happened to Bowman. 
when was that 51 and 52 is that some of the cards are basically the same image but uh you get one cropped and one shows more of the image um yeah i think both of them are pretty cool i think i might have a preference for the squared off one i don't know i'll have to decide on that all right guys uh it's just about nine o'clock probably a good time to uh wrap this up but before we go i want to give you guys a little sneak peek uh as to what you should be expecting next week next sunday if all goes to plan um i will be doing a live stream with this gentleman uh this gentleman right here who just left a comment um so doug i hope you realize that when you sent me that photograph that i was going to use it man i mean so just just uh something you should have expected uh so doug and i uh several sessions ago uh did a um session going over the Ramley set, the, the, the pre-war Ramley set and had a great time doing it. I had a great time doing it. Doug said he had a good time doing it. I got a lot of good comments and feedback on that. And so pretty much right away, Doug and I said, you know what, we should do that again. We should both look at a set that neither of us know much about and also maybe don't even have any cards for, from and, and go through that set. So Doug and I will be going through the Cracker Jack set next Sunday night at 8 p.m. And I have not yet begun to prepare for that. I don't know, Doug, if you've started preparing for that, but doesn't matter. I know it'll be a great time. Um, and if you, if you weren't sure it was going to be a good time, I hope this picture... Uh, solidifies it for you and i hope you guys will come to that uh, so yeah so he's not prepared at all either so you know it's going to be great guys um so that's it for that's it for tonight um thanks everybody for hopping in uh i hope everybody enjoys the end of the regular season and for those of you uh that are like myself fortunate enough to have a team that's going into the postseason here's where the fun begins i can't wait it's going to be fun love postseason baseball always glad when I get to experience it. It's going to be two years in a row for me. So anyway, have a great Sunday night, guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you guys all next Sunday night at 8. Take care. Have a good night.